Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Graham Hunt and today we're going to be breaking down my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K handheld rig. This is the rig that I use for most of my shoots if I'm not on a tripod or a gimbal. It is more of a heavy build. I do prefer heavier builds when I'm shooting handheld so that it gets rid of those micro jitters when we are filming and this footage looks more stable. We don't have everything that we'd want on this rig, but it is what it is and uh, it's served me really well the way that it is. Um, if I were to live in an ideal world right now, I would love to have a follow focus wheel. Um, I'd probably go for the tilter one as well, just so that it matches everything that I've got. So to start off with, we obviously need our camera. This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, like I said. I love this camera. It's really inexpensive for the type of camera that it is, being a cinema camera. Um, and it really holds up um, when you are doing so many different shoots. We have shot, you know, from music videos to short films to promo videos to spec ads to corporate internal films on this camera. And it's, it's, it's held up through them all. It's really great. So you have your camera. It's not really safe to rig like this. So we need something like a cage and basically what a cage is going to do is first of all it, it protects the exterior of the camera so if you drop it while it's in the cage still not very good for the internals but externally at least uh, the cage is going to take the beating more than the camera if it lands at least on these sort of corners but more than that what the cage allows us to to do is to um, you know put on other accessories that are going to allow us to really get the most out of out of our rig and, and build up a rig um, so let's get this guy on here and then we can talk about the rest of it. Cool. So there we go. We have our cage safely on our camera. Um, and what I didn't mention before is that this is the tilter cage, as you can see over there. This is the tilter cage. Um, the reason I have the tilter cage and not the small rig cage is because um, it's what came with the package deal. I bought this camera second hand and it came with the cage and a whole bunch of different accessories. So what's really cool about this cage as well is that it comes with an Allen key that just magnetically sticks to the bottom of the camera there. So the next thing I always do is put on our top handle and our top handle just gives us a lot more ergonomics when we're carrying the camera. It really does help it, especially when we are moving around a lot. It gets heavy holding it over here. That's usually how I like to shoot it. Um, but um, having the top handle really helps us just move it around and also allows us to pass it to other people safely. I know that's so small, but it really makes a difference. Like when I'm passing it to an assistant or to someone else so that I can go and do something else. It just, I know that it's safe. I can hand it straight to them and they take it from the top handle. We don't get caught up and someone slips. It's a small thing, but it really helps. We also mount our monitor onto the top here, but we'll get to that in a moment. So let's slide this on. So once that's nice and tight, you can really see um, it just helps with the ergonomics of the camera. You can use it to film from up there, um, but it can be quite awkward, so I don't usually. Um, the next thing that we do is we take our rod base plate. We slip that onto the camera. Usually I actually have my rod set up and the base plate always attached together. I travel with it like that. Um, it just makes it so much easier so that when I get onto set, I don't have to put the rods in and everything. All I do is slip the camera into place and we put the, the battery on the back and we keep moving. Cool. So now we've got our rods attached. We're going to take our back plate, which is basically our V-Lock plate. It has no electronics. This one is not an electronic base plate. Um, all it has is the V-Lock mount and um, its release. But this actually is from Small Rig, but it works really well. Um, so yeah, we just slip this into the back of the rods and slip our V-lock on the back and uh, our base is ready for the build. And here comes our battery. So the battery we're using is a mini V-lock. It is a SWIT um, and it has 98 watt hours. It's 14.4 volts, which is you know pretty much standard for V-locks, I think. Um, this is flight compatible or flight compli compliant. So usually you're not allowed to fly with batteries and things like that, but uh, this one is compliant to the restrictions, so we can. It's really cool because it has this uh, indicator on the side there. As you can see, it's not full at the moment, but um, it's really nice to have an indicator. You know how much battery is left and you don't sit in stress about, is there enough battery? Isn't there enough battery? And so there's our base plate and base set up for our rig. 
What's really nice about using all tilter things for the main setup of the rig is that it all works so nicely together. And so when I'm on set, I usually have this ready, like I said, I just take the camera and I can slide it into place just like that. Lock it in the front. There we go. And now we've got our setup pretty much ready to go. The next thing we can do is put on our lens. Um, we are going to be using the Samyang 50mm cinema lens. Um, I love this lens. I mean, it's not, again, it's not ideal for the Blackmagic 6K as this is a 50mm. Blackmagic 6K is a 35mm sensor, which means that it basically adds a 1.6x crop to your lens. So if this is a full frame 50mm lens, when we use it on this camera, it actually becomes more close to an 85 millimeter lens. So it's a lot more tight than I would probably us usually shoot. But it is a great lens, it's really clean and I use it a lot. So now we've got our lens on, we've got our top handle on, we've got our base and our battery on. Um, we can really move on to the other accessories like our monitor. So our monitor is the Atomos Shinobi 5 inch monitor. Look, it's a great, it's a great monitor. It's not an external recorder, it's just a monitor. It doesn't have an HDMI out and it doesn't have an SDI out. That is probably the only downfall of this uh, monitor that I can think of. So to attach the monitor to our kit, we need this little guy, which comes with the advanced kit that Tilter sells for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera range. And basically, you just slide this onto the top here, on the top handle, tighten this over here, and stick your monitor onto the top, and tighten it up and there you go we have our monitor safely attached and what's again really nice with this is that it can tilt left and right um, as well as tilt up and down which just makes it really easy to to maneuver when you're trying to film something to connect the monitor to the camera so that we can send picture signal we use a, it's just a regular sized HDMI, but it has a coiled cable and that allows us to, you know, move freely without um, worrying too much about putting strain on the ports because um, if it's, you know, if it doesn't have this coil, if it were just sort of a straight cable, that tension can really pull on those ports and it's, it's quite dangerous, especially because we unfortunately do not have right angled ports um, or port adapters on our rig which would allow us to have that safety because uh, they attach to the cage. These just go straight into the ports of the camera, which can be dangerous. So just be careful, make sure that you don't pull on these and break the ports because if those ports are broken, it's, it's broken the internal motherboard and uh, you most likely have to get a new camera or can't use that functionality. So I'm always careful and having a coiled HDMI really helps. Cool, we're plugged in now. We've uh, just got one more thing for the monitor, which is our battery. And this is basically just an, a Sony NPF battery, but uh, this is, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Hanel. Um, it's, it's a really big boy. It's really chunky, I love it. It lasts forever. It also has an indicator on the front, which is lovely. Um, and so yeah, we're just gonna slide that boy in. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our Tilter Mini Matte Box. First thing we gotta do before being able to put our matte box onto our lens is screw in our 77 millimeter ring um, to make sure that our matte box actually slips onto it because uh, it needs to, it's basically a step up ring to ensure that your matte box can slip on and it's not sitting directly on your lens. Um, and it's basically just, it's just a safeguard for your lens. You're not scratching your lens and there's a bit of space between your lens and the matte box. So. Yeah, let's screw that bad boy right in there. Now obviously this is a 77 millimeter because my lens is a 77 millimeter thread size. So yeah, you would obviously use whatever thread size is, is right for your lens. So you can just Google that if you need to. Here's our matte box. On this side, we can loosen that up. Once that's loosened up, you can sort of just slip it straight on and tighten up on the side again right over there. So if you tighten it right here, you're all good to go. That's not gonna turn, it's not gonna move. The second to last step with this rig is getting power to the camera from our battery. So we've got our V-Lock at the back here and on the switch, our D-Tap connection is at the top of the battery 
And so we take our D tap to DC in. I think this is called, or it's AC in. I think it's DC in. Um, but basically, it's just a female two pin. And uh, we just stick it in. This is also coiled so that we make sure that we're looking after our ports. So be aware of that. Um, but yeah, this is the Black Magic power cable. You can get this you know, on Amazon, wherever you are. You can most probably find it on a local online store. So this is D-Tap to Blackmagic power cable and uh, we're going to plug it straight into our, our V-Lock and bring this around this way and go straight into our power port. And there you go. We now have power to our camera. As you can see, well you probably might not be able to see it but there's a red light coming on the top now which is a lot better. So, so yeah, but this is our build and we use this in pretty much every single shoot that we go on. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more videos and let us know what you think of this build in the comments. What do you think we could add to this in the future? And let me know if you have any questions. Awesome guys, cheers.